Hey friends, you're watching Brainstorm Makers. I'm Henry and I'm in the greenhouse today. I have something special to do because it's going to freeze tonight. Now this is a Dynaglow ventless heater. It's typically put on a wall inside the house but I'm using it in a temporary configuration here in the greenhouse. I have a wooden frame to hold it in position and the propane is delivered by a rubber hose that goes to a 20 gallon tank outside. I feed the heater in the greenhouse from this 20 gallon tank. The gas runs inside from this two-stage regulator through a rubber hose. This is a temporary installation and should not be used in a garage or a living space. Now, I tried firing this up yesterday and one of the problems was that there's a lot of large yellow flames coming up and that means there's not enough combustion air going to this heater. Now that's not safe, it's not good, it, it's inefficient and it will fill this greenhouse up or could fill this greenhouse up with carbon monoxide, which I really don't want to do. Now, this heater does have what's called an, uh, an ODS sensor, oxygen depletion sensor, and that's how it really works. A lot of people call it a carbon monoxide sensor, but it doesn't detect carbon monoxide. It detects a reduced amount of oxygen. What happens when the oxygen is reduced is the little flame, the little pilot flame, starts pulling back away from the thermocouple that's in there. And that's because the velocity, strangely enough, of the flame is reduced. And that means that the flame will curl upwards. That means it goes away from the thermocouple and the thermocouple will shut off the flow to the heater. So I'm not worried about propane flooding this greenhouse. And I'm really not too concerned about carbon monoxide because the greenhouse is relatively porous. It's sealed up well. There are openings in the greenhouse. There's a fan on the south side, a fan on the north side, and no matter how hard we try to seal those up, we're not going to be able to completely seal them up. Well, in order to fix this heater, I need to take the cover off. I've already taken off four screws. I pull the cover off and then we'll get to work. This is a press fit. You want to be really careful when you pull it off because there are things inside that you could damage. Cleaning this heater to improve the combustion efficiency is a lot of work. It's pretty easy. I have a stiff brush that uses some nylon bristles. I'm going to go ahead and use that to clean out each one of these jets. Now the jets are really just slices in this burner tube on the top of the tube, but there's also some air intakes on the front and the back. Those need to be clean. This heater is set for about eight months. It's dusty here. We do get some condensation, sometimes, not very often. We have relatively low humidity. But you'll get dust and corrosion on this tube. So what I'm going to do is start cleaning this tube using this brush. This is going to take a while, so I'm going to bring you back once I'm done cleaning the top of the burner and the two side vents that go along the burner tube. Well, about 20 minutes of brushing on this burner tube 
and I have all the dust and a little bit of the corrosion that happened on this aluminum tube. Maybe it's aluminum. I suppose it could be steel. Yeah, it's probably steel. I have the corrosion that was on it, which is mostly rust, off of this tube. Now, when I fired this burner up yesterday, it was relatively bright out, but I could see the yellow flames coming up this high. So it's a good three quarters up to this baffle. But it wasn't coming from every single burner location. It was coming up here and here and one over here. Now there's a problem that happened. The big problem was when this burner isn't clean, the flame will back up and go to this nozzle. There's a the regulator up here turns on the propane going to the burner. It also regulates it somewhat. Now there's a pipe that comes all the way down from that regulator and has a small hole drilled in the end. That hole is specific for propane. There's another one that you could get for natural gas, but we only have propane, so that's no big deal for us. But the problem is, when this tube isn't working right, it means that the flame will back up out of this burner tube and start burning here, where there's nothing to hold the flame back. What happens or what can happen then is you can create all kinds of fire and that could be a fire hazard. Now out here in the greenhouse it's not a particularly big deal because the propane will be shut off. Well it might not be shut off fast enough. So you don't want this to happen under any circumstances. So I've brushed all of the dirt off of the entire surface of this heater. I've cleaned the tube and I used a small can of compressed air to blow through the pilot tube right here. The pilot has the pilot tube has a orifice in the end of it and that's where the pilot will ignite and it then hits a thermocouple right here and that thermocouple has a wire that goes back to this regulator that can shut off the propane. If the flame goes off of this thermocouple, it will shut off the propane, which is a good safety feature. Well, now that I have this thing all cleaned up, we'll try starting it. Now, you may not be able to see the flame very well because it's bright out here and the blue flames don't show up too well. In fact, even the yellow flames didn't show up or I'd be showing you a picture of those. So I'm going to go ahead and try lighting the pilot light and then once I have it going, I'll turn the heater on itself and we'll see if it works. I just turned the button to pilot. I hold it down. And there, the pilot's lit. I let it burn for about 30 seconds. I release the pilot. The pilot stays lit. Oh, I can hear the pilot burning and I can hear the heater turn on. Boy, that's some heat. The heat hits this deflector and comes out the top of the heater. I have a little bit of yellow flames occurring along here in little bursts. That's because dust, any kind of dust particles that hits this burner will be burned and show up as an orange light. 
And I'm going to go ahead and turn this off now. Turn it all the way off. I don't want to have any flames running when I'm putting this top back on. It's a little touchy because it's a sheet metal and it warps out of position a little bit when you're reinstalling it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I get both sides on and double check all the way around. The sheet metal has a press fit. There's a little dimple on the top of the heater's sheet metal and you just need to make sure that gets in there and you can pop the four screws back in. Well that was easy. It took some time. This heater is ready to go tonight for when it gets cold. We'll go ahead and turn it on probably about 9 or 10 o'clock tonight. This has a thermostatic control so that the burner doesn't light until the temperature reaches below the set point. And I'll try to set this heater up to go on around 40 degrees, which means that I'll be preserving the propane, but I'll also be heating the greenhouse. I have another heater that I'll be putting in this week. That runs on diesel fuel. That's another story, another video, and I'll explain why I'm doing that later when I have it installed. Well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications because we're doing a lot of stuff here on the homestead. Keep brainstorming. We are. In fact, Irene's got some work to do here in the greenhouse, so I'm going to have to skedaddle so I'm not under her feet.